You're about to see part two of our wedding renewal uh, in 1991. I hope, I hope you watched part one. We will probably go through this at another time so you can pick up on part one if you did not see it. But again, listen carefully. The vows and what Dr. Larry Freeman, our pastor at that time, talks about yeah. why it is so important to marry according to the Word of God. Watch this. Sharon, will you have Herman to be your lawfully wedded husband? To live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony. Will you love him, honor him, comfort and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, continue to keep yourself only unto him as long as you both shall live? I will. Well, 32 years ago, your dad was right here, but today it's your son. I would like to ask who gives this woman to this man? My sister and I. Thank you. As you took the steps from the floor to the altar area, the platform area, the music has been playing, holy ground. Somewhere along that line, you all made a commitment not only to each other, but to God, and then to God in the form of full-time Christian service. Uh, the local church is a part of your life. The local church is a part of your week-to-week -week life. So now you have entered into this place of worship. You have now taken vows to God, to witnesses that are present, and, and to the pastor. But now these vows will be those very special vows that you say to each other. Would you hand her your flowers? I would like for you to face one another. Would you join hands? Herman, I did not have the joy of doing this 32 years ago. I was only two then. <laughs> but I really am thrilled that I get to be a part of this this evening. Would you repeat after me, but to Sharon? I, Herman. I, Herman. Take thee, Sharon. Take thee, Sharon. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or worse. For better or worse. For richer or poorer. For richer or poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. I pledge you my faith. I pledge you my faith. Sharon, 32 years ago, you took a similar set of vows to Herman. And we are praying that tonight we'll bring those back to your memory and we'll also help you to reaffirm and recommit those vows to Herman. Would you repeat after me, but to Herman? I, Sharon. I, Sharon. Take thee, Herman. Take thee, Herman. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or worse. For better or worse. For richer or poorer. For richer or poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. I pledge you my faith. I pledge you my faith. I don't know who sang at your wedding 32 years ago, but I do know this. This is one that's very special to you. Your daughter, Colleen, has a very special song for you at the conclusion of this set of vows. Meeting you was 
I'm sure that uh, grandsons make absolutely wonderful ring bearers. Uh, this evening, it's with Jesus' joy that we have a ring bearer that's a grandson. And by, he's a good-looking guy. And do you have rings hidden in there somewhere for me? Good, I hope so. Well, I see one. Okay. And w do you have the other one in your pocket? Did you hide it? Okay, here we go. He has a pillow, and they're really just hidden. So let me talk to you about a ring for a moment, okay? This is something that is very, very important. It's important to me. 32 years ago, you had a ring placed on, on your fingers. You have worn it. Now, I don't know if it's the same one. I didn't ask that question. Sometimes they sort of change through the years. But you've worn a wedding band. I want to talk to you about it again. Because wedding bands are something that uh, are very important to me because they're a, a visible example of the vows that you just took. First of all, let me hold it up and show you. It is round. It has no beginning and no end. Okay? It's an ancient symbol of eternity. Somewhere, somewhere, uh, we get the idea that this will just sort of show us that this means the vow that you took until death us do part, visually, day after day, that that is going to show you that. Please remember that. This is the vow that goes with that until death is to part. Okay. Also, it's made of very precious metal. 
uh, somewhere a jeweler took this metal, boiled it down, impurities came up to the top, and he scraped all the impurities away, and what was left is precious metal. They call it precious metal. That's why it costs so much, okay? Just like 32 years ago, when you got married, you probably thought each other were perfect. You found out real quickly that that wasn't the case, okay? I don't know. You might have liked to squeeze the toothpaste in the middle, and she liked to squeeze it on the end. I don't know. Or sleep with the windows open, sleep with them closed. I'm not sure. But there are some things not worth arguing over. There are some things not worth making it a, 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 a time of dividing. And that's what this stands for. You said a while ago, to love and to cherish. Now, that's two words. Love, the, the definition of love is very hard to pin down in the English language. But there's one that says that love is not only the desire to possess the object loved, but to do the highest good for the object loved. But the word cherish is the word that means to love just like you love yourself, to cherish, to love, you, to love that spouse more. And that's what this, that's what this uh, precious metal stands for. There's another one. When you put it on your ring finger, you walk out that aisle, and you did that 32 years ago somewhere. Uh, it just uh, it says real loudly, I'm a married woman. I'm a married man. You have this on your finger. It speaks real loud. It says, I have a husband or I have a wife. I have somebody I want to spend the rest of my life with. Uh, I've taken vows to them. Wear these rings and never, never let, them, never let it be forgotten, the vows that accompanied it. Uh, no beginning, no end, which means until death us do part. The precious metal means to love and to cherish. The, the simple symbol of the fact that I have a husband, I have a wife, someone I've taken vows with, let it speak to you daily as it has for 32 years. Let it do that now. Herman, would you place this on her ring finger and repeat after me, but to her. I, Herman, I, Herman, give thee, Sharon, give thee, Sharon, this ring, this ring, as a token, as a token, of my love for you, as my, of my love for you. And now, I want you, Sharon, to place this on Herman's ring finger and repeat after me, but to him. I, Sharon, I, Sharon, give thee, Herman, give thee, Herman, this ring, this ring, as a token, as a token, of my love for you, of my love for you. Would you pray with us? Heavenly Father, hear us as we pray here at thine altar on our wedding day. Show us the paths that thou wouldst have us take. Help us to follow thee and sin forsake. In thy sight, O oh God, today we've come to pledge our love in unity. Bless the sacred vows we take and keep us one through all eternity. Give a strength in sorrow, want or pain, always steadfast to remain. And when clouds shall fill our skies of blue, help our love to see us through. Life's ebbing tide, may we in perfect love and peace abide. And when life's sun shall set beyond the hill, may we go hand in hand together still. Amen. 
Herman and Sharon, I know as being your pastor that not only have you taken vows to the witnesses and to the pastor and to God and taken vows to each other and exchanged rings, and I know, though, that there are some other things that we need to talk about in just a few moments. I want to reaffirm your relationship with Jesus Christ. I know that 32 years ago, when you got married and through these years, Jesus has been the center point of your home. When you've had the difficult times, you went back to that foundation stone and you started right there because that is what made you what you are today. Herman, do I understand that you've received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and He is the Lord of your life and that you want to continue to be not only the head of this home and the head of this marriage, but you want to live in such a way that your wife, your children, your grandchildren, your friends, your television audience will see Jesus Christ in you. Is that your desire? Yes, it is. Sharon, I want to reaffirm with you as wife, mother, grandmother, that Jesus is the Lord of your life. Is it my knowledge that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and He's the Lord of your life? And that you want to live as a wife to Herman, as a mother to your children, a grandmother to the grandchildren, to you, in front of your friends and in your television ministry, that you would live in such a way that people will see a living Lord in you. Is that your desire? Yes, it is. With that in mind, with all of your special guests here today, there is a very special guest here today, and that is the power and the presence of the living Lord. Let's enter into communion with Him. It was after supper that Jesus took the bread and He said, Take it. This is my body that is broken for you. He blessed it. He broke it. And He said, Take it and eat it. And as often as you do this, remember that my body was broken for you. Just as real as you feel those elements inside of your mouth right now, that's how real the living Lord is right here and in your life. See, that's why he died on Calvary. That's why the blood was shed. That's why the body was broken. It would be relevant for you today. Many people have tried many other things, but that that remains is the fact that Jesus died for Herman and Jesus died for Sharon. And behind you came two children that are involved in, in Christian work. Before you, you have parents that were, Herman, your parents still living, have been married 55 years. Sharon, your mother has gone home to be with the Lord, but your mother and dad were married 45 years. And as I look down the biography of your homes, it was a joy to realize that in your immediate families, there have been no divorces. Jesus has played a very important part to your home. And his presence here this evening is something that's so very special to you. Just remember, he said, my body was broken for you. Then it was after supper that he took the cup. Would you take that and hold that just for a moment? He took the cup and he blessed it. And he said, this is the blood of the New Testament. This is the blood of the covenant that I am making with you. He blessed it. He told them to drink it. Drink it. Drink all of it. And he said, remember... As oft as you do this, this is my blood that was shed for you. When we come to this point of this renewal time this evening, it is with Jesus' joy that we say to you that the power and the presence of the living God has been within your heart and within your life. And you've lived in such a way that people see the, the, the real Lord they see the real Lord Jesus Christ. 
Herman and Sharon, after 32 years, don't stop now. Don't stop now. Keep living in such a way that people will see Jesus in you. One of the things that I don't know if you did 32 years ago or not, but I'd like to do this evening to demonstrate to your friends and to your television friends and family a little bit of how the Herman and Sharon Bailey family grew. Would you join me at the communion table? There's a candle that is lit in the center of this table. And Herman, it, it stands for the power and the presence of the living God. Well, 32 years ago, the two of you exchanged vows and you became one. What I'd like for you to do is take the two candles next to the one in the center. The one in the center stands for Jesus Christ, always predominant in your life and is so predominant today. It's the largest candle. I want you and Sharon now to take those center candles, which end, uh, take the two outside, right, but the big one, and it, it indicates that up to this point, your paths 32 years ago had been separate. And then in 1959, you all were joined in marriage. Your life became one with Jesus Christ. That was a great time. Well, that was in 1959. 1960, a daughter was added to this family. Her name is Colleen. And Colleen was added to the family, and boy, life hadn't been the same since Colleen was added to the family. A little girl came. She's going to take that center candle, uh, that small candle, and light it from the center candle. Because as she grew up, Somewhere along the line, you taught her about Jesus Christ and came to a saving knowledge of Christ. And today, she serves the Lord as a pastor's wife and has ministered with you. And so she joined the group. There's Herman and Sharon and Jesus and then Colleen. Well, in 1962, a boy came into the home. His name is Steve. Now Steve is going to take his candle. He's going to the center candle, and he's going to light it, signifying the fact that Jesus Christ is supreme in this family. So Steve came along, and now we have four. And Jesus has been first place in this Bailey life. Yeah, been some hard places, been some difficult times, but always Jesus has been in the center and he's brought you back. Now, Steve works with Dad, and Colleen is serving the Lord as a pastor's wife, and Mom and Dad are serving the Lord. Now you've got other children, grandchildren, that are coming along, and they're seeing a living Lord. That's what this is all about. That's what this is all about. So tonight, you've reaffirmed your vows. You've reaffirmed the vows that go with the rings. You have taken communion together, and now you stand as a family, and this is indicated by the candles that are lighted right here. What a tremendous blessing it has been for 32 years. Thanks, guys. Herman and Sharon, I know that we have looked forward to this evening. It has been my joy for several years now to be your pastor, to watch you live in such a way that people will see Jesus, but also to see a couple, a husband and a wife. When we come to the end of this time of reaffirming your vows, I think this has been such a special evening because, first of all, of where it took place. It took place in your church. Who was here? Well, nobody's more special than the kids and the grandchildren. Your family that is here that were best man and maid of honor. And all of these friends and family members that have come from different places and friends of the television ministry. But I think it is most special that you recognize the power and the presence of the living God. I know personally you did not want this to be a television program. 
You did not want it just to be something to see, be seen on, in your ministry. That it is something very special and personal to you. At this particular time of marriages, I always come to the time where I have a lot of wonderful things to say. But usually the couple is so anxious to take off out of here, they don't want to listen. So this evening, it is with Jesus' joy that by the authority invested in me as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ and by the state of Florida, I pronounce that Herman and Sharon Bailey are still husband and wife after 32 years and don't let anything happen to it. What God has joined together, don't let man ever put us under. And may God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit rest and abide upon you. And may the home that you established 32 years ago continue to abide in the peace and love of Jesus Christ. Keep living the life to where not only kids see you loving Jesus, grandkids see you love Jesus, and the family goes right on. Herman, you may kiss your bride. That's enough, Herman. <laughs> Wipe off the lipstick. Now, would you turn and face the congregation? This is the hard part, because I know y'all don't, really, you know, you'd never get to do it. Get your flowers so you'll look pretty for the picture. And I would, you know, and I'd like, go ahead and stand on the edge of the platform, because this is where they all cry and throw money and things like that. <laughs> it is with Jesus' joy that I introduce to you again after 32 years, and I want you to congratulate them, Mr. and Mrs. Herman Bailey. Would you congratulate them? Thank you. 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 Thank you.